morning, Bucknutters, and welcome into the Morning 5 on Thursday, July 17th, 2014. I am Dave Biddle, joined by the people's champ, Matt Baxendale. Back to the top 24-7 for the class of 2015 was released yesterday. Justin Hilliard moved up in the rankings. It is now the number 10 overall prospect in the nation. He's still the number two outside linebacker in the country. He's still pretty good. While well, Jason Cornell dropped several spots and is now ranked as the number 67 prospect in the land. Again, still pretty good, though. Our Alex Gleitman has a detailed look on the new rankings on the front page right now, which really delves deep into the Ohio State angle. Honestly, I don't get too bent out of shape about the stuff backs. So the, the Buckeyes are piecing together an excellent class to rank 15th in the 24-7 sports composite team rankings. That number is sure to rise. So I'm not going to leap over things like Cornell moving down a few spots, even though I don't necessarily agree with it. Your thoughts? The truth is all this is super arbitrary anyways. I mean, Deshaun Cornell, whether he's ranked 67th or 46th or 10th or 1st or whatever, it doesn't really matter. This isn't like recruiting on the NCAA video games where you got a guy's measurements and his exact projections and you know he'd come in rated as an 82 and be able to start as a sophomore type of thing. These guys are four-star recruits, high four-star recruits in, ter- in terms of Cornell, a guy like Eric Glover-Williams. That means they're really, really good football players. And the truth of the matter is you never know on any of these individual players. Five-star players bust, after all, and three-star players turn into A.J. Hawk. So Cornell bumping up and down 20 spots, I'm never going to get worked up about. I'm excited to see some of the other commitments, such as Jamel Dean or Nick Connor or Grant Schmidt getting bumped up a little bit. Tyler Green's now a four-star. But in the end, the key to recruiting is recruiting a lot of top-notch players. And you're going to see a certain percentage of them end up panning out. A certain percentage of them don't. The more highly rated players you have available at your disposal, like Ohio State has been doing lately, then the better your chances are of success. It's not an exact science, no matter how much effort we put in to try to make it so. So, in the end, Deshaun Cornell is just as good a prospect today as he was yesterday. And since he's not a five-star composite player anymore, instead he's just a super good four-star composite player, it's the same thing. He's a great prospect, and we're thrilled he's a Buckeye, and he's going to help draw more great prospects to Columbus. You know, what's interesting to me, or funny to me, even better, is that Jay Sean Cornell at one point was the number one overall prospect in the land. Now he's 67th, and, and I agree with you. You know, It's really splitting hairs when you're talking about the top 100. Um, what did he do um, between the time of his, his junior season ending at one of the top programs in the nation at Creighton Durham Hall in St. Paul, Minnesota, where he was ranked as the number one overall prospect in the nation, and then the, the, the shorts and t-shirt season takes over, and he drops 66 spots to 67th. Um, what do you think happened? I mean, is this just a case of him not being a 7-on-7 a seven seven guy, or what do you think happened there? At this point, I have to think that this is a perfect example of a player who didn't do a ton of camps, per se. Cornell went to a couple, but he didn't go in the circuit. Um, you know, he's, he ended up making his way to the opening, but he didn't do all these other things. And on top of that, I very much wonder about a lot of the camp guys, especially when it comes to the big guys, who physicality is a key part of their game. Uh, to me, it's like ranking a quarterback in 7-on-7. Seven seven. Sure, he's got the ability to make all the throws when nobody's putting a pass rush on him, but he doesn't have to move around right. in his pocket. That's how Shane freaking Morris got five stars a couple years ago. And having watched the kid play, I think we all can agree he wasn't a five-star caliber player. So in the end, a guy like Cornell, his job is to be a physical pass rusher. You can't really do that in camps. You can measure quickness, but you don't. You can't measure tenacity. You can't measure his ability to just decide to beat someone and beat them. It's very hard to rate O-linemen and D-linemen in particular when you're not playing real football. And Cornell, I mean, she's the number one overall player a year ago. That should tell you all you need to know about him, that he was ever even considered at that level. And like you said, top 100 is literally splitting hairs. Deshaun Cornell is an elite prospect. And it's kind of like a couple years ago when Jalen Marshall was listed as a high four-star on 24-7. He was a composite five-star. To me, that was just that was putting a, a bloom on the rose. It's still a heck of a prospect coming to the Buckeyes, four or five stars regardless. Josh Sweat is the new number one. He vaults all the way up from second to first. Uh, everybody knew dump. he was pretty good, and he's still pretty good, apparently. Um, I took some heat for saying I think the Buckeyes are – I, I said a bit of a long shot in a bolt that I did, and, of course, 
our good people at Bucknuts. Well, I, I love you out there, our, our loyal eight or our loyal nine, whatever we're up to here on the uh, Bucknuts Morning Five. I love you guys out there. But I took some heat for saying that the Buckeyes are a bit of a long shot for Josh Sweat. I'm sticking to that. I hope I'm wrong. I hope they're the favorite. I hope they're not a long shot. But I think they are a long shot. But he is now the number one player in the land. Agree with me or disagree with me? Is, is Josh Sweat a long shot as it pertains to the Buckeyes' backs? Well, when he's calling another school his dream school, uh, that should tell you all you need to know. Um, first of all, blanket disclaimer, anytime you or I or anybody else on staff says, we don't really feel good about it, doesn't mean that we're rooting against the Buckeyes to get the kid because we want to be right. No, 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 no. We, we want the Buckeyes to have the best possible recruits. You know, we're all Buckeyes ourselves. You know, we just got to call it like we see it. And a guy like Sweat, who is from Virginia, which is very much a crossroads of half the country in recruiting because, sorry, Virginia Tech, but there's not a major in-state blue-blooded power. Virginia is the area that Ohio State, Penn State, and half the SEC can go to and reasonably say, hey, you don't have to go at home because you have to go a certain distance to come to an elite school regardless in one of those locations. Now, the other thing with Sweat, too, is he's hard to get a read on because he's very soft-spoken. He's very, I guess, cautious in what he says. So it's not like... I mean, I prefer that, frankly, to the gong show that is recruitments of guys like Torrance Gibson, where you have to have a top 15 or a top 13 or whatever, and every new every two weeks you take one off the list like a reality show. But Sweat's so going to be a hard one to get a read on, and he's an even harder one to land because every single person in the country wants the kid, plain and simple. And I, I like I said, I think Ohio State has a good chance. I think they'll get an official visit, but I think they're still a long shot. I think they're still behind Virginia Tech. I think... But Florida State, Alabama, Ohio State, and the local school are all in on a kid. If Ohio State even gets the official visit, it means the coaches are doing something right with a player like that. Well, by definition, if he's a long shot, they do not have a good chance. But since you're a smart guy, I'll give you a mulligan on that one. Um, Van Jefferson, we have a story up on the site right now from our Bill Curlick. Number 19 wide receiver in the country. His ranking continues to rise. Okay, so Van Jefferson visited Ohio State. Uh, on Tuesday and also last night, flew out last night, and uh, says he had, quote, a great visit. Also tells our Bill Curlick that Ohio State is basically even with Tennessee, Georgia, and Florida uh, at this point. Bax, are you buying this? Because I am not buying this. I, I do not think Ohio State's going to land Van Jefferson. I don't think they're even. What's your take? Uh, I very much have felt like this has been trending away from Ohio State for a while here. I think Van Jefferson at one point was ready to commit to Ohio State a couple months ago. But since then, I feel like there's been some influences from his family. This has been much discussed, especially from his father, who's an NFL coach. So he knows what he's talking about in terms of player development. I think Van Jefferson simply has had his father in his ear saying, Urban Meyer has not really sent a lot of guys to the NFL. Uh, Everybody talks about Percy Harvin. People forget about Lewis Murphy and Riley Cooper and company like that. Um, In Ohio State right now, with the position coach that we have not being uh, a proven wide receiver coach, I think that hurts them a little bit as well. But on the other side of the coin, I don't think Tennessee is a major player here. Uh, The local factor that people want to talk up, I don't think that applies when his father is in a coaching position where he may end up being in another city at any point in time if things don't go the right way for the Titans. He may get a job in San Diego or Seattle or wherever. I think Georgia's the team here. And now here's why. Georgia has a long track record, a very long track record, of sending wide receivers to the NFL under Mark Rick. Plain and simple. They've got a really good one in the NFL right now with A.J. Green. Yeah, there there happens to be a guy you maybe have heard of. Green, I believe is his name. A.J. Green, right? But he's not the only one that has ended up in the NFL. I mean, if you look at Mark Rick's track record recently, he had Tavares King drafted. Uh, he had A.J. Green, obviously, was one of the highest picks in the draft. Chris Durham was drafted a wide receiver. Mohamed Massacoy, still in the NFL, wide receiver. And then you keep going back. Marlon Brown NFL. played in the NFL. Reggie Brown's in the NFL. Fred Gibson was a, a pick in the NFL. And Mark Rick has been around for 15 years, and he's, he sends guys to the NFL wide receiver. Not to mention his offense is the definition of the pro-style offense that uh, a coach like Sean Jefferson wants his son to develop in a, pl- a system where a kid can prepare himself for the next level. And, you know, this is unfortunately something that Ohio State's fighting an uphill battle with right now, and that Ohio State would love to land Van Jefferson, love, love, love to land the guy. But you're going up against a school like Georgia, which produces a lot of NFL wide receivers, and fair or not, I think 
I, and the vibe I've gotten on this from every time I read anything here is Van Jefferson's dad is not sold on Urban Meyer developing his son into an NFL receiver. I think Van Jefferson loves Ohio State, but I think this is a business decision. And right now, especially with Georgia getting the final visit, after Ohio State was supposed to get the final visit, which usually says volumes, I feel like this one's going towards Georgia. And I'm not changing my recruit nuts pick because there's too much potential if, if I'm wrong to keep my points. But I, I feel like Ben Jefferson's very much trending towards Georgia, and I hate to say it. Great stuff, as always, out of the people's champ, Matt Baxendale. Keep it locked to Bucknuts today, my friends. We're going to have Jay Book's column outside Columbus. We're going to have the Daily Boarding House. I'll post that around noon. And I'm going to post a column, my own column, this afternoon. All of the aforementioned content is subscriber only. If you are not a subscriber, give our free trial a test drive. Take it away, best damn band in the land. Bye.